right? So for the past few months, we, we've been working on developing a new CEO program called Designing for the Digital Age. But before we talk uh, a bit more about this, maybe first we should clarify, what exactly do you mean by digital age? Well, digital age is just a way to classify this enormous shift in society. And we've seen these before. We've had the industrial age, which completely reshaped the world as we knew it back in the late 1800s. And then we had the information age, which is really when desktop computers came in. Now the digital age is the next one, and it's going to be impacting everything because all of these devices that we are adding into our lives are now going to start talking to each other. And this is part of this whole Internet of Things, the IoT concept, where all these devices are going to start talking to each other, and they're going to start doing actions without us directly having to tell them to do this. And so our cities are going to be changing because, for example, the traffic, the traffic light knows what the traffic patterns are and the traffic light will change its timing. That kind of integration is what we're talking about when we're getting to this new digital age. Okay, so let me make sure I got this right. Basically, what you're telling us is that we all have more and more smart and connected devices on our person or in our homes, and that uh, is changing the way we are experiencing the built environment and living in the built environment and also potentially reshaping the built environment itself. Is that, is that correct? Well, the built environment is going to be changing as far as we need to know that all of the uh, support structure that will enable these devices is in there. So, for example, if you have a lot of autonomous robots, you're going to have to have charging stations. You're going to have to be mindful of your flooring choices. But the envelope of the building itself is not going to be that dramatically different because the human body is still the same and the requirements for a human body are the same. What's going to be changing for us in the design profession are all of the things that we specify that go into making a structure work. Everything from a home to an office to a restaurant, that's going to be changing. Okay, well, thank you for that, that clarification. So it sounds like all the design professionals, regardless of whether they design homes or offices, hospitals, schools, hotels, restaurants, you name it, basically, are going to be affected by this, um, uh, by this change or by this rise of the, the digital age. Uh, now, moving on, shifting gear a bit, to the health, safety, and uh, welfare aspect uh, of the course. As you know, the course already has been approved for health, safety, and welfare credits. But I was wondering, can you give us concrete examples of how exactly this digital age is going to affect us or affect the end users in terms of health, safety, and well-being? So, so let's, start, let's start with health. Do you have an example? Sure. I think everybody out there can agree that uh, we, particularly Americans, are more mindful and aware of our health than ever before. We've seen this through the explosion of Fitbits and tracking data and did you get your steps in today. People are more aware of health. But the difference is now that we're getting more integrated devices, you're going to really be able to track your health better and provide more data, for example, to your physician. Uh, so, for example, you may already have your Fitbit, you're doing all that. You may have your smart alarm clock, but what about your bathroom being basically the first step to your in-house doctor? So you get up in the morning and you go to the bathroom. Well, now we're going to have to be specifying toilets that can monitor what's coming out of people, what kind of things and changes there have been going on to their biochemistry, could be checking their blood sugar levels as simply as that. And then say you get up and your installed mirror that you're putting into the bathrooms are very smart pieces of technology that not only can you check your schedule and read your Facebook and all that, but the mirror can actually monitor any changes to your skin or changes to your skin, skin quality to check your hydration levels, uh, to see if you're eating correctly, all these kinds of things. And then that data can actually be forwarded into your doctor's office. So there was an example of a young woman who was having night sweats, restless sleep, uh, losing a lot of weight. Her bed realized that, her toilet realized that, her mirror realized that, and her smart connected scale realized that, sent the notice to her doctor's office. The doctor's office said, we think you should come in and see us, and it turned out she had cancer. And so this kind of diagnostic tool 
is how we can be improving health because now everything could be integrated and you can track it better. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. Now, now, what about what about safety? Safety is huge. Uh, this is one of the biggest things of the built environment. If a building falls down and kills everybody in it, we've kind of failed in our jobs. So when it comes to the built environment, safety is one of the biggest keys. And this is where the smart integration really comes into uh, focus. So for example, you've got an office building. And that office building exists in a smart city. So within the smart city, everything's connected, including something like your fire department. So the building catches fire. The building calls the fire department. The fire department can kick into the cameras in the building and the sensors in the building and see what kind of fire, how widespread it is, where it's located within the building. So by the time the firefighters show up, they know exactly what kind of equipment they need to have so they don't have to call in a ladder truck later. They know. And their building will also be able to tell them where anybody is inside that building that might be trapped. And they also, the connectedness is going to be so that the fire department even knows where all of their firefighters inside that building are going to be located. So the increase in safety is huge from something as simple as that. So when you're designing your office building now, all of those things are going to be specifying from the cameras to the sensors to the alarms are going to be part of this bigger scope of the Internet of Things. Great. Now, of course, if we have improved health and uh, safety, we by nature will be a little bit uh, better off. But do you have any specific example that relates to, to well-being? Well, I think uh, I came across a, a, a term that I thought was fabulous, and it's just basically that we're all time starved. Uh, time is the currency of the 21st century. And so if you can save time, you can reduce people's stress levels. You can give them a the chance to go and do something fun and improve their well-being. So by having to have things automated, you're making your life simpler. You're taking out those friction points that kind of stop you. I'm not having to spend 15 minutes running a vacuum every day or a vacuum once a week. I just have my robot do that. So all those little friction points just get easier and make your well-being, make your life easier so that you can have fun. You can go out and do things now. And the fun that you can have is going to be even better. Well, that, that, sounds, that sounds very exciting. So thank you, Linda. That's definitely food for thought. And, and I hope those listening to us will be joining us either in person or online to learn more about this uh, Designing for the Digital Age uh, Continuing Education Program. And in the meantime, of course, we're here to answer your questions. So thanks for listening. And it's an exciting time. We're in a very fabulous, exciting field in a wonderful time, but changes are coming and we need to be ready.